It's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to take a manual blood pressure. I got the request from someone in the comments page. Guys, please do not forget to like or subscribe below. If there are any videos that you'd like to see me do a tutorial on or a review on, please put it down in the comments and I'll make sure I get that content coming to you. So the first thing, guys, this is called, and I can never pronounce it, but I'm gonna try, a sphygmo manometer. I did it, okay? So this is what we use to take a patient's blood pressure. Okay, now this is an adult one, and the first thing you wanna do, where you see the arrow, that's where you want to place it right over that artery. You're gonna be doing it in the antecubital space, either the left or right arm. For my model today, I'm going to be using the right arm. And so on this cuff, I'll get a little bit closer so you can see, it says left or right. So like I said, I'm using the patient's right arm. So what I want to do is, please extend your arm. I'm going to put that blood pressure cuff over the arm, but I'm going to make sure that the arrow for their right arm is right over that right artery. Now the cuff I'm placing right above the antecubital space, that's important, okay? You don't wanna place it on the antecubital space, you wanna do it right above. Okay, so here's the next thing I'm going to do after I've secured the cuff around the patient's arm. I'm going to put on my stethoscope and I'm going to place the diaphragm of the stethoscope right in that antecubital space, okay? So when the patient flexes their arm, that middle space, that's the antecubital space, and I'm gonna put it directly over the artery because when you put it directly over the artery, that's where you can hear it the most, okay? Now what you wanna do is support the patient's arm. If, they can't, if they're elderly, they can't hold your, their arm up. What I like to do with my patients just to help them out, I tell them they can put, place their hand on my, my hip. Go ahead, sir, you can place your hand on my hip. Don't get fresh. And then the next thing that you do, you use this dial. You turn it all the way back and you start squeezing. And the cuff is supposed to squeeze the patient's arm. And you want to squeeze until you reach resistance. Once you reach resistance, you don't want to squeeze anymore. Then you slowly let go of the dial, very slowly. The minute you hear the first click, that is your systolic number and you have to remember that number. Okay, then you're gonna keep hearing the clicks. Those are the heartbeats. Then the click's gonna suddenly go away. When that click goes away, that's your diastolic number, and then you can release the valve. Now, there are a couple things that I wanna make sure that you guys understand about that. As a nursing student, I promise you, once you make that cuff tight on the patient and you start releasing that valve, if the moment you release the valve, you start hearing clicks, that means it was not tight enough. And if you try to pretend like you didn't know this, the teacher will fail you, okay? Your nursing instructors, they've been doing this for years, they know all the games, and they're gonna be looking out for that. So if you happen to squeeze the cuff, and then you let go of the valve, and as soon as you let go, you start hearing clicks, all you have to do is say to your instructor, Mr. Such and Such, I started hearing clicks, so I know I didn't squeeze tight enough, I'm gonna start all over again. And guess what? Your nursing instructor is going to be uh, impressed. They're gonna know that you know what you're doing. So all you have to do is squeeze all over again and start listening. It's gonna be quiet at first and then you're gonna start hearing click, click, click. That first click that you hear, that is the systolic portion of the blood pressure. That's the number on top. Then the clicks are gonna finally go away. When the clicks go away, that's the bottom number. That's your diastolic. So that's how you end up getting that patient's blood pressure. The first click that you hear is the systolic. And once that click disappears, that's your diastolic. And that's it guys, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Two more things I want you guys to know. If you get a blood pressure cuff, let's say you have a normal blood pressure cuff like I do, but you happen to have an obese patient and that blood pressure cuff is too high, the blood pressure that you're gonna get for your patient is going to be falsely high. And let's say you have a normal blood pressure cuff, but your patient happens to be emaciated, malnourished, they're very, very skinny, and the blood pressure cuff is too large, you're gonna get a falsely low reading. So make sure that your blood pressure cuff fits appropriately. Guys, I hope that this was helpful to you. Please do not forget to press that like and subscribe button below. Pressing that like and subscribe button, that is what is going to keep the content and videos coming. Please, uh, Write a comment in if there's any tutorial that you'd like me to make for you or um, any video or review. Thank you for coming and I'll see you next time.